At the XYZ company, Mr. Scientist is in charge of the thermal analysis lab. His colleagues need thermal conductivity data for their latest batch of formulations, and he'll need to pull on a complete toolkit of capabilities. Knowing what technique to use makes all the difference to completing the job right and on time. Not to worry, Mr. Scientist, we're here to help. Let's get sciencing. Now, the oldest method of thermal conductivity measurement is also one of the most trusted. It's called the guarded hot plate. As Mr. Scientist demonstrates, a solid sample must be machined carefully. Its dimensions must be precise so that it can be placed in a stack between two plates. One plate is cooled, the other heated, and their temperatures are monitored until they are constant. The time it takes for the stack to achieve a steady state condition is used to calculate thermal conductivity. This method is uniquely capable of testing super insulation materials under 0.01 watts per meter Kelvin. But the long test time means it will take weeks for Mr. Scientist to test all of his samples. And the method doesn't work for liquids or high thermal conductivity materials. An early evolution in thermal conductivity testing came in the 1960s. Laser flash diffusivity becomes all the rage. In spite of its considerable price and complexity, it remains widely used even today. And with good reason. It tests at the most extreme temperatures. A disk of sample is specifically machined and subjected to a short pulse of heat applied by laser to the front face of the sample. The resulting temperature rise on the opposite face is monitored as a function of time with an infrared detector and used, together with the sample thickness, to determine thermal diffusivity with the following equation. Thermal conductivity can then be derived if we know the specific heat and density. The laser flash is invaluable for certain applications in ceramics and aerospace, which require high temperature testing, but its complexity and sample limitations limit its wider use. To test a wider range of Mr. Scientist's samples, another method would still be required. By the early 1990s, a new method had come along. The transient plane source method was developed for the testing of a wide range of materials. The once promising technique involves the use of a flat sensor of electrically conducting nickel reinforced by layers of insulating kapton. The sensor is placed between two identical samples. A current is applied to the sensor which generates heat and the sensor can monitor the temperature versus time. By monitoring the sensor's recorded temperature response versus the time, we can determine the thermal conductivity of the material. However, it requires considerable experience to generate accurate results. Careful consideration, however, needs to be given to setting up the appropriate timing and power parameters, as well as in selecting the right size sensor for different types of materials. These challenges result in ambiguity and often create problems with repeatability amongst labs. Early in the next decade, a consortium of industry leaders, including Kodak, Henkel Technologies, and the U.S. Navy, collaborated with a lab instrumentation company on the development of the modified transient plane source. For the MTPS method, a heat reflectance sensor was designed so that the heating element was supported on an insulated backing and surrounded by a guard ring for one-dimensional heat flow. This means only one sample and interface is required. Heat is generated when a current is applied to the sensor's coil. Simultaneously, the rate temperature increase is monitored by the voltage drop of the sensor, which is calibrated to the temperature change. The thermal conductivity of the sample is inversely proportional to the rate of increase in the temperature monitored. The lower the thermal conductivity of the sample, the steeper the rise in temperature and vice versa. Unlike its predecessor, the transient plane source, this method was developed with standardized timing and power parameters, eliminating ambiguity in obtaining accurate results. While fast and easy, this method also achieves similar accuracy as the traditional guarded hot plate. But the technique doesn't do everything, and knowing the limitations are important. For example, its application is limited to temperatures up to 500 degrees centigrade and an upper thermal conductivity limit of 500 watts per meter Kelvin, meaning it is designed to meet the bulk of the lab's testing needs. With a modified transient plane source, Mr. Scientist can rapidly test many samples without damaging them, preserving the samples for further testing and analysis. Mr. Scientist, it's time to wrap up. Let's review. 
Mr. Scientist will use the guarded hot plate for his really low thermal conductivity samples, like vacuum insulation panels. He'll reserve his laser flash for high temperature testing above 500 degrees Celsius. And for general testing, he'll opt for the MTPS method over the older TPS technique for its wider versatility and being able to easily handle the bulk of his samples. A balanced strategy means Mr. Scientist has the right tools for any job he faces. Good work, Mr. Scientist. Go get them. To learn more about measuring thermal conductivity, reach out to us, Thermal Analysis Labs. We're here to help. Let us share our expertise in thermal analysis with you.